Welcome to Cracking Crime. I'm your host, Jamie Tilson, and I'm here today with the bonus guy. The bonus guy, Mr. Jacob Tilson. Oh, dude. It's been a while since just you and I did an episode. Yeah. Is he excited about today? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, thank you everybody that's been tuning in. We'd like to thank our guest from, it's been two weeks already, maybe even three weeks, uh, Mr. Larson. Hopefully you're tuning into this episode as well. Don't forget we're giving away a uh, Amigos gift card. I don't know why, but we're doing it. Um, that was for Larson. Um, we still got all of our other stuff to give out yet, um, but we are working on that. So, uh, our Taco Bell gift card, the good one. Yeah, that one's still got to get out to... Uh, uh, that was like two months ago, wasn't it? has been forever. It's been a long time. Yeah, but we're going to get that one out. So, Mr. Matson, uh, you did win that one. That one's coming to you. Uh, Mr. Garcia... Wasn't he the only guy that actually he participated? Did. He did. Was, he was the only one that actually did it. Uh, so we appreciate you actually going on and doing what we asked of you. You won a gift card because of it. Uh, we still have it sitting here. We just haven't given it out. I'll get it oh. to you. I just actually texted him the other day and told him that he's got it. And he, he's fine with it. You're getting a call so, from Mother. I know. So we will chat with her in a minute unless she wants to be on the episode. So Yeah, yeah she can join. She can join in. Yeah, she'd love that. So, she would hate it. <laughs> Mr. Garcia... Um, like two months ago, won the, uh, we did that, uh, B. John's, B. John's beef jerky giveaway. That was like last year. <laughs> that was last. I'm not good at getting these things out all the time, but if you want to go and compete, we have a bunch of people actually all over our social media that's been liking, sharing, doing all the stuff. We've got a post. Go check that out. It's on Facebook. Um, otherwise, check us out all of our social media. No stuff. wonder nobody wants to participate. <laughs> I know, because I never get them out. I will. We've been a little bit busy. So, I just closed my big shop downtown. Um, so, I've been moving Tilson Customs. Um, I haven't made Tilson Customs one of the main sponsors, but any automotive accessories that you guys want, um, Tilson Customs is your dealer. So, not I'm anymore. Not, well, I'm not stalling anymore, but we're still selling vehicle accessories so if you need a tunnel cover if you need weather tech um, all that stuff tilson customs check us out online um, also go to tilsoncustoms.com and you can check out the crack and crime podcast because it's all on the tilson customs website so yeah i know i looked at that and it was weird it just linked to the podcast it was nothing else no there's um this we have the 76 chevy pickup for sale we've got um Links to shows weather tech. I've got all that stuff listed on the website. Um, you can't shop online, but go check out the podcast there, Tilson Customs. Um, it's also got our phone number, everything else. So get a hold of us, one stop shop for vehicle accessories. One um, stop shop. That's right. Patreon. If you guys like what you hear, go check us out. Patreon.com at Crack and Crime. And, you know, become a patron. We do some special things on Patreon. Probably about once a month, we throw a new episode out up there. At this um, point, like once a year? No, we've been doing once a month. It's been going pretty good. We've got several posts on there, so go check it out. Um, well, we're also doing this like once a month now. Why well, not? Well, we, we're, we're going to be getting back to it. I've got some really cool things in the works. So I've got some special guests that are lined up and scheduled, and they're coming up, and that's going to be a ton of fun. So I can't wait to get started on all that stuff. I honestly hope Mike Tyson just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that, well, you know what? I don't want to give anything away. <laughs> Um, but you never know. Yeah, That'd be that, really that might be something that we try to do. So anyway, go check us out. All of our social media. Join in. Have some fun with us. That's all we're here to do. We're just here to have some fun. We tell some stories along the way. Um, but again, we do have some pretty cool stuff coming up in the works. So um, make sure you like, subscribe, follow. Also, wherever you listen to your podcast, give us five stars. Okay? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. I know. We're, we're giving them all kinds of homework this week. So... Go like us, give us five stars, leave a comment. You guys like us, we like you, leave us a comment. Um, <laughs> am I asking too much, Jacob? Yeah, anyways, our patrons, we've got... we've got. And grandma. while you're at it, just go solve six times eight. Who knows? <laughs> well, that's a pretty simple one. Uh, you it's 48. But. It is. So, <laughs> um, big shout out to our patrons while we're talking about Patreon. So we got Mr. Garcia. Thank you so much, sir. We definitely appreciate that. We've got Miss Grandma Tilson and we've got Grandma Mary Jo. Uh, thank you both so much. 
And then we've also got Phelps Harvest. Phelps Harvest, um, we always give them a big shout out. Thank you for being our Patreon. Go check them out. CBD um, creams and all that stuff. Check them out. PhelpsHarvest.com. Or I th- sorry, I take that back. It's on Facebook. Hey, do they got any Phelps turkeys? Harvest. What's that? Do they got any turkeys? Do they have turkeys? No, but as far as jerky goes, B. John's Jerky, go check out B. John's Jerky. That's also on Facebook. Um, they've sponsored a few things on the show. Still, huge shout out to Mr. Brady. Thank you so much for the chair. Jacob's now sitting in it, and it's awesome. He's loving it. So, all right. I have kind of a quick Cliff's Note version today because I just um, watched this documentary. A lot of people were talking about it. It caught my interest, and it's a pretty good documentary on Hulu. Um, so I want to talk about this guy a little bit. So again, going to give kind of a Cliff's Note version. We're kind of in a bit of a hurry today. Um, so we're still going to try to put out, you know, fairly long. But I can um, already tell you're trying to speed talk through this. I'm not trying to speed talk through it. Yeah. You am are. I talking a little fast? Right, you're talking, talking fast. Am I? Okay. Well, <laughs> hopefully I Halfway through, through, you're just going to be talking about, like, going once, going twice. So... <laughs> All right, so, uh, but we just watched The Jewel Thief on Hulu, and it's a documentary. Um, They actually have all the people involved, that's the officers involved, and the guy that actually did all the crimes. And it's kind of an interesting deal. So I looked him up, I did a little bit of research on it. Um, I think what caught my interest the most, um, well, let's just jump into it, and then I'll tell you. I watched, like, the one... (laughs) Of seeing like one scene of him, and it was just him saying, "Man, like people can only wish they can be as good as I was at robbing the bank." <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was definitely pretty arrogant, and it's kind of a crazy story. So, okay, let's let's just kind of jump into it again. Kind of the Cliff's Note version, um, but it's it's still going to be a lot of fun. So, join us on this path. There we go. So, the guy's name is Gerald Blanchard. So I got a picture up so Jacob can see him. Um, he thinks that he looks a little bit like Seth. I don't. I don't think so. Um, in that picture, maybe a little bit of a resemblance, but I mean, not much. Well, you're going to have to link it now that you said something about that picture. Right. Well, there's pictures of Seth on our TikTok. Go check that out at Cracking Crime. It looks like a younger <laughs> version of Seth. I still think that. I know. I think that you're crazy. And then if you, if that's just that one picture. If you look at different pictures, you see that it's not. But anyway, well, you better look at different pictures. So, then. so Gerald Blanchard is born in Winnipeg in 1972. All right. It says here's he's 51. Right. Well, yeah, because he was born in 72. So yeah, that would make him right there, right? If he's had a birthday, because um, yeah, that's 10 years older than me. So anyway, um, I thought it was 11. So he's born in Winnipeg, but he's put up for adoption. So he's adopted by a gal and he's raised in the part that caught my interest and it's right out of Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska. So that I thought was kind of crazy. So he grows up in Omaha, Nebraska, and he starts at a young age. He starts stealing stuff. It's kind of funny at the opening gate. He's he's talking about how he was stealing like from the neighbors and he's stealing all this stuff. And the mom was like, "Yeah, that didn't happen. None of that happened." And then, <laughs> so so that part's all kind of funny. He ends up getting arrested a bunch of times. We can already tell he's critically insane by that. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. He like so it, in the Hulu version, he's actually telling the story. Well, and it then, says like, released. He's been released. Yeah. Yeah, because he's not... Yeah, so that's another crazy part of all of this story, okay? So he does start stealing stuff at a young age, and for some reason, he videotapes, like, everything that he does. So he carries a camcorder. Well, most does, most people does nowadays. Well, nowadays, but not back in the 80s. Back in the 80s, it was pretty unheard of to see guys walking around with camcorders filming themselves with everything, and that's what he does. So he's got... There's video in Hulu... Uh, in the uh, TV show or the series, the movie, whatever, that actually has like him videotaping himself st- or ha- a friend videoing him stealing stuff from like gas stations. Oh yeah, and it l- looked very set up. Or it looks like a setup. It looks pretty set up. Like the people are actually involved with it stuff. But anyway, you look at yeah. it. I mean, it's all. It's kind of weird. And how like you don't see this guy and just think, oh yeah, no, this guy's really smart. He doesn't. I mean, he. 
He looks like Seth. So <laughs> that's that's a pretty good point. So <laughs> so anyway, but it's it's kind of crazy. So anyway, he's now stealing stuff at a young age, all around the Omaha and Council Bluffs area. Right. He ends up getting arrested a couple of times. Now during one of the arrests, he. It's, it's very crazy. He gets arrested and taken in for questioning. So he's in the interview room, and law enforcement leaves him alone in the room. He gets on the table, climbs up, and hides in the ceiling. So in the ceiling tile, he just hides out up there. Man, he's really skinny. Yeah, well, I mean, they're, you know, four by two ceiling tile. But he climbs up there, and, yeah, and I guess it's it's... Strong enough to support him. He, he wasn't a real big guy. But anyway, so he's in the ceiling and he ends up hiding there. They bring in his friend for questioning in the same room. He actually is in the ceiling tiles watching and listening to all of this. And then they all end up going home for the evening and he's still just hiding in the ceiling tile. So he eventually climbs down out of the ceiling. This is in Council Bluffs. And I got a friend that calls Council Bluffs Council Tucky. And I don't know why he does that, but that's hilarious. Turkey? Council Tucky, like it's Kentucky. Council yeah. Tucky, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I don't so, know. I, I'm thinking about a lot of turkey right now. Why are you thinking of so much turkey? I don't know. I <laughs> saw a clip weird. of the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so he ends up in the middle of the night, then finally after they all go home, he climbs down out of the ceiling tile, and then he goes to the officer that arrested him. He goes to that guy's desk, steals a bunch of his stuff. He, like, grabs a police duffel bag... And, like, kind of fills it with, like, the picture of the officer's wife. He takes his police jacket, all this stuff. And then he leaves. So he ends up basically escaping law enforcement <laughs> all by staying in the police station. And then he just walks out the front door with a bunch of police stuff that he stole from the police station. Then, for some dumb reason, he then goes to his house. So he, go, he goes to his mom's house. So then, the next morning, Omaha SWAT team comes they to the house, back. and they arrest him at mom's house. Well, now they know that he's pretty slick, So, but for some reason here again, they must not have had cages. Well, they didn't have cages back in the 80s, so now you've got a vehicle that doesn't have a cage in it. He's got the guy, and everybody tells him, hey, this guy's been, you know, he just escaped from Council Bluffs, so like, keep an eye on him. He's pretty slick. So they've got him in the back seat of the cruiser. They pull into the Sally Port, which is like the garage Does he on the jump gym. out the window this time. No, he the police officer. Their common practice for some random reason was to get out of the vehicle, leave the key in the ignition, and he walked up and put his gun away. Then they would come back and get the prisoner out of the back seat, and then they would walk them into the jail. So he gets out of the car. And when he gets to the front of the car, he hears the doors lock. He turns around. This guy's sitting in the front. This um, Blanchard is sitting in the front seat. He had gotten the cuffs from behind him. He had gotten them around to the front, which you can do. Oh, right? Yeah, I right. can do that. And so he does that. And now he's got his hands in the front. So he climbs over the seat, gets in the car, throws it in drive, takes off, hits the police officer, and then just drives through the, sally, the garage door, the sally port door. And he escapes now. In a cop car, and he's just driving. So now he goes back. To he goes to back to Council Bluffs for some reason. From Omaha, he's back in Council Bluffs now in this stolen cop car, and he drives past an accident scene that the police officer that had arrested him the day before is working the accident scene. Turns, sees the Omaha PD car driving through, and he sees Blanchard that he knows because he arrested him yesterday driving the car. So they end up having a pursuit. They end up getting him. They finally arrest him. He ends up serving like three years in prison for that whole crazy escapade, right? And this is all, like, he was stealing a lot of stuff for Radio Shack is what he ended up going to. Like, all of this happened because he had gone from stealing stuff from gas stations to stealing stuff from to stealing stuff from Radio Shack, which Radio Shack back in the day was like, it was a... Uh, uh, record store? Not a record store, but a, an electronic store. So they had like, you know, camcorders and they had TVs and they had, it was, it, everything electronics was in a Radio Shack. Um, so he was, that's where he was stealing from was Radio Did Shack. Did it have a boombox? 
They would have had a boom box. <laughs> good, good question. Nice. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just, I don't know why I I always and the eighties it felt like everybody was just holding a boom box. Up. <laughs> so I, were, that's how they I were, that's, it. Yeah, that's like every movie in the eighties. They they yeah. like yeah they carried it on their shoulder. If they wanted to show that they loved somebody, they stood outside of the window and they like played love songs through the boom box and held it up over yeah. their head. Yeah, They'll boom throw like a big brick. part of the eighties. <laughs> they throw a brick out the window to get their attention. That's right. Yeah, break the windows. Window. Yeah, no bricks wouldn't even break windows back in the eighties. They just throw it. You hear a tink. Well, what was that? And then they look, and then the guy'd be playing the "I love you" song. I don't want to wait. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that was a '90s song. But anyway, oh. <laughs> anyway, so now we go back. So he he was stealing from that from Radio Shack, right? He was actually being pretty profitable about, profitable with it because then he was selling some of the stuff. But then he started returning the items. So he ended up he gets out of jail in the '90s. This is uh. Like, 93, I think, is when he gets out of jail. And now he starts out slow, but then he goes back to stealing from Radio Shack. But now what he's doing is he's stealing stuff, and then he's making a receipt that looks real, and he's returning the items to other Radio Shacks and other... So he's stealing from stores without them knowing it's stolen. And then he's getting the money. And he's returning it for cash. And he's making a lot of money. Like, a lot of money. There's pictures of him running around with celebrities. Man, you you wouldn't have, if. How was he smart enough to do that? But is so dumb that he would just return to his mother's house. Right. That's <laughs> the weird thing. Is like you think that like he can steal stuff. I I will say that after watching like all of the stuff that he does, the dude has a mind for stealing. It's insane how good he is at stealing and getting away with it. But he's so not smart that he's then telling everybody that he's doing it and like all this stuff. And you'll learn as he goes on. But so right now. Hey, bro, I just stole this TV. You want it? (laughs) Well, no, he was returning it for a ton of money. But then he's flaunting all of his money. So he ends up saving up enough. He buys himself a house. Dude's like not that old. So you know what? I actually think that he was doing all of this. Before he got arrested, I think that he had bought his house and everything. And yeah, so I'm, yeah, I got ahead of myself with the whole story about him getting arrested. So he was doing all of (laughs) this. Who knows? We're making this up as we go, basically. Well, we're not making it up. I'm just, I'm going off. So I got, I got, I put the cart before the horse. So he was stealing stuff from the gas station and then he was stealing from Radio Shack and then he was returning items. Then he was making a ton of money. Then he finally got on a radar and he got stolen or he got arrested and then that whole tale happens where he escapes and then you know then he gets arrested again by the SWAT team well now he serves a bunch of time in prison right so he does like three years it's like 93 he gets out and he then moves out of Nebraska he goes to Canada so after he gets out of prison he goes to Canada and then while he's in Canada he starts doing the same thing He needs to make some money. He's fresh out of prison. So he starts stealing stuff and then making receipts, returning it. From another radio shack. Probably from another radio shack. But it was, I think, all over the place. I think he was just hitting big box stores like that, and he was making a ton of money. So now he got a little bored with it, and he started hitting ATMs and banks. So he ends up going in, and he starts stealing from ATM machines at banks. And, I guess, all over the place, but he was mainly hitting all these banks and wasn't he saying something like, I just grew to hate the bank because... He did because, yeah, it was something to do with his mom's house got foreclosed or something like that, and he just hated banks. But he was doing this to make money. I mean, the guy just stealing from Radio Shack and returning the items was making a fortune. And I mean, he was all he was running with all kinds of rich people, doing all kinds of stuff. So now he's robbing banks, he's doing that, he's he's driving Ferraris, he's got yachts, he's got all this money. One bank that he robbed, it's kind of crazy, he actually, they were getting ready to do an opening on the bank, so he dresses up as an employee to work on, working on the bank, goes in and he hides his own cameras in the walls to watch the ATM machines and stuff like that. 
So then the night what, before... What, did he have a sledgehammer? No, so yeah, he went in, made a hole in the drywall, put a camera in the wall, and then he like put things over it so then it was people didn't know that there was camera behind the wall. How would he have time to do that? Because it was they were just building this new bank. So they're building this new bank. He dressed up as an employee of the construction crew, and he was in there doing construction work inside the bank, and people just thought he was an employee in there working. So now he hides cameras in the sheetrock, in the walls, and in the ceiling and stuff like that. I mean, he's got cameras like in the vault room and all that stuff, right? So now he, the night before the opening, he climbs into the ductwork inside the building and he had pre-sawed all of the locks, all of the bolts on the locks. He had pre-sawed them like 80% broken. So now they load, it was like $700,000 they loaded into all the ATMs for the grand opening the next day. Then in the middle of the night, he climbs down out of the ceiling, breaks all of the vaults on the back of the ATM machines because he already had them pre-ready, and then steals all of the cash that they had just loaded into it that night. So the next morning, when the bank managers and everybody come in, it looks like nothing's happened. And then when they walk into the room behind the ATM machines... That's when they found all of the ATM machines were empty. And bro- and all the doors were broken off of them on the back side of the ATMs. So it was pretty ingenious. He did some things like that. They ended up having... That would have to be super specific to recreate that. Oh, I know. It's crazy. It's it's a pretty crazy tale. I mean, the whole and thing... And plus, nowadays, then... everybody would just be like, Oh, that's him. He does not work here. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, absolutely. Well, now the camera systems are better and... Everything's better, but one that night, there was he parked the getaway car in the Walmart parking lot next door. Yeah, and a Walmart security guard wrote down the license plates to vehicles that were in the parking lot overnight. Yeah, and they happened to write down his license plate number, so he became a person of interest pretty quickly, right? And then they started tying things back, and they started tying it back to that there had been all of these because it. It, it, when you're talking in the 80s and then the 90s, there wasn't a lot of communication. Like if you did, right? But I'm talking 80s, 90s, like into well, the right early now, 2000s. It's 93. Right. So well, you don't need no, to no, no, say no. no. It's, it's later than 93. He got out of jail in 93. Then he was up and through the throughout the 90s, he was hitting banks all over Canada. All right, 97. It might have been 97 that he hit this one. But anyway, so um, he ends up doing all of that. Right, and then now they're kind of putting it together because what I'm saying is, is back in those days, if you did something in Omaha, then the Omaha police knows about it. But there wasn't really a way to let like Los Angeles know about yeah, it. Yeah, state to state would could be right, different. and and town to town. Sometimes you know, like I could see where maybe Omaha and then Council Bluffs don't even talk that well, and it's just across the river. But they're different agencies, so they. One side doesn't know what the other side's doing that much. There's a little bit of a better way to track all of that stuff now because not only news but also like systems and national databases and they've set up a lot of things because guys were doing stuff like this. But what they started doing then is when they started linking it, they started calling other banks and they started finding out from other jurisdictions that all these banks had similar robberies with ATMs they started putting two and two together. And now they've got a prime suspect. How did it do it to the other banks? If Well, so those ones were a little bit different stories. And they didn't really go into how he did it. They just said it was very sophisticated the way that he got in undetected on all of these. And nobody had an idea who he was. It was pretty crazy. And this dude's running around, again, Lamborghinis, Ferraris. He's traveling the world. And at some point in time, he ends up working for somebody. So he gets involved with like like a mob type person out of England. And now he all of a sudden he goes to I'm Cairo. Just, I'm now imagining the actor for Leo Getz from Lethal Weapon. <laughs> he was always saying that he is this big mob boss. Well, he wasn't a mob boss. He Remember, Leo Getz worked for the mob boss. Yeah. That but had the you said diplomatic the actors. Right. Right. Yeah. So, but anyway, so he ends up working with this guy. He ends up going to Cairo, and then they're just running around. The Their boss from, like, England sends him to Cairo. 
and they're running around and they're hitting ATMs with fake credit cards and they're just taking, basically draining all of the money with fake credit cards out of the ATM machines. Now, I don't know why he started doing all of that stuff when he was hitting all of these banks and he was making millions of dollars. Like, he had, like, most of these banks that he was hitting, he was getting $100,000, $200,000, I, I don't understand one. how people can just be like, wait, this dude doesn't have a job and then he's making millions? Hmm. Right. Well, he claimed that he had jobs. And, you know, if he would have, if he would have hit those, he maybe never was caught. But he loved to steal from when he was a little kid. And I think it was more the getting away with it that gets him. But That's anyway, right. Cliff Notes version, he ends up getting caught, right? They finally have enough, and he was his boss calls him, and there was getting ready to be another bank opening in back in Canada. So he's now back in Canada after this whole Cairo thing happened and he had a guy scam him, like a bunch of stuff happens there. So he goes back to Canada where the cops are already watching him. Oh, I forgot. So after the seven hundred thousand dollar score, mm-hmm. they end up and then they have him and they can't get can't catch him red handed doing anything. So they finally get enough to get a a uh, warrant to do a wiretap on his phone. So, most of the rest of the story after that big bank one where he got seven hundred thousand, mm-hmm. they started wiretapping his phone and they just started listening to his conversations, and he was telling, like he was talking people's names, he was talking locations, places he's hit, he was planning everything over the phone, like he was talking to his boss in England about Cairo on the phone, like they've got all of these recordings and all of this stuff. This is so he, funny. It's, I know. So it's you like you have to be vague when talking. That's what I do. <laughs> well, we're we're not criminal masterminds over here, robbing major banks like that, like this guy's doing out in Canada, yeah. right? A person will ask me, being like, "Was this person over there?" And I would say, "Perhaps, well, maybe." I don't, I don't care for that whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. No. I. I. Anyway, but what I'm saying is that this guy was just like telling everything so that the cops are just listening in then they they have the whole thing about him going to cairo him talking about what he's doing in cairo so now he's back and the boss calls him and he says i'm in a duct basically doing the same thing he had done to that other bank they found that this bank is getting ready to open and he was set doing the same thing he's inside this new bank and he's setting all of his cameras he's setting everything up yeah so he said i'm in and he's talking on the phone while he's in the bank on the, in the ductwork. Oh my god! I know. Yeah. So now they look it up and they find out which bank is getting ready to do an open. So then they send law enforcement in in cars to sit outside. He sees cops sitting around outside of the bank, so he decides just to ex nay the whole thing. So now he never shows up. So he doesn't end up robbing that bank because there was law enforcement sitting outside in undercover vehicles, but he recognized it, so he doesn't hit the bank. So now they decide they're just going to pick up everybody. He had a girlfriend at the time, and there was like 18 other people that he was involved with. Yeah. They they served the search warrants at the exact same time all throughout Canada, and they took down him and all of his associates at the same time. His girlfriend gives up everything. So nobody else rolls. Nobody else talks about anything, but the girlfriend gives up everything. Breaks instantly. Instantly. Yeah, there's video of her. She's crying. She says she's scared of him, but she hates him now and told everything. They, they didn't have much evidence on him, right? They searched his house and, or his apartment, and they, they couldn't find much. Then he, she says he came out of the mirror one of the times, and he had a bunch of money in his hand. So they go back to the apartment on a search warrant and they break all the mirrors inside mm-hmm. and they find a hidden room behind one of the mirrors. And that was all of the video that he had taken throughout all of his life of him stealing and he recorded everything. So here's all of his videos of him stealing all this stuff. Jesus. Here's all of this stuff. And then the main part, because I'm Man, telling you about... he's a hoarder. Because I'm telling you about all these banks he robbed. I'm telling you about everything he did in Omaha and Council Bluffs. Mm-hmm. But in the middle of all of that, he had had a wife. Sometime from when he got out of prison and he was living in Canada, he was married. He travels overseas with his wife and he ends up stealing a, um, let me see what it was, what they called it because they called it something like a star. Um, the 
cis star. So there was a very, um, she was like a princess. Oh, I thought you were going to say something like the Star of David. No, it was called the Cis Star. And she had several of them made. She was like a princess way back, like hundreds of years ago. She had all of these, and they were diamond-encrusted stars, right? And so they were very rare, and they were very expensive. And she wore them in her hair. She had several. There's only one left known to man. And he stole and it. And it's in a museum overseas. And he stole it? I think it was like in Italy. And he stole it from a museum. Won't tell how or why, anything like that. So that star has been missing for several years at this point. He now gets arrested and he uses it as a bargaining chip to... They, they sentenced him, and he was looking at... He faced up to 166 years in prison for all of the crimes that they had enough. Yeah, I can but tell you where it is. But because he cooperated, told them how he did all of this stuff, and he gave up this cis star, they then basically rolled it. Dude ended up doing like eight years in prison was all the time he got. Oh. And he gives the cis star back, and then they take that back overseas. But he was never really... he. He, he can still be prosecuted for that over there, so he didn't really talk much about it. So they don't go in. So the name of the whole thing is called the Jewel Thief, and he's worldwide famous now because he's he stole this cis star from this mu- museum. You know, next he's going to go for the... Oh, what's it well, he's out. He's been out since 2012. He's already been rearrested since then. So he, he got arrested, served all these years in prison. He gets out of prison in 2012. And then His now he's already, be been, the he's already been re-arrested for theft charges. And didn't get anything. He got like six months in jail for that theft. I don't. They didn't really say what that theft was. But it's just like the dude... <laughs> now they just made a documentary series about him. It's just absolutely crazy. Now the one funny thing is, he was. I said he was adopted. Right, mm-hmm. so his dad is in Winnipeg. What is he also a thief? No, but it's kind of the comical relief of the whole series when you watch it, because the dad, <laughs> but number one thinks that the the kid is like just as smart as anybody can ever possibly be. He's the smartest guy in the world. Which you watch the guy and you're like, yeah, I don't see that. But yeah, right? and he walks into the store. All, all I can. I haven't seen any of the other stuff. I can still see the setup of the original store or at the beginning. Oh, right. So then it's, it all seems like a setup. He seems like so stupid once you see it. Right. Yeah, and that's kind of what it is. But it's kind of funny because <laughs> then they break back to the dad every once in a while in the series. And it doesn't even make sense. They shouldn't even have him in there because he doesn't have anything to do with the story at all. The dad doesn't. But he just... Is in there. And then he starts talking about... The dad says that he is a fighter. The dad himself was a boxer. He was a fighter. So then that somehow is... Like maybe why his son is the way he is. Because he's a fighter. And he no. doesn't look like a yeah. fighter whatsoever. Yeah. But then he then he makes the comments like... Uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny. He's like... Makes the comment about like... I'm such a mean guy that like... I'll, I'll bite your nose off if that's what I have to do to win. You know, and so so they're using that as part of the maybe that's what's going through the no the bank guy. That so ain't then they happen. go back later on, they're telling more of the story, they go back to the dad and then he's like, I'm a black belt. I do karate. They, he he's what? he's the Canadian version of Chuck Norris. And then they, for some reason, he gets up and he's doing some leg kicks and stuff. And they're the worst kicks you've ever seen in your life. It's, it's bad, dude. It's so funny when he's, I looked at your mom because we're sitting there watching it. And he's up and he's like, they call me the Chuck Norris of Canada. And he's, he does a kick. And he, and I looked at her. We both started laughing. Anyways, it was kind of funny. but It doesn't so, even get over his waist. <laughs> it was so bad. Oh, man. But anyway, that's it. He basically is out. He's free right now. He probably still has a bunch of the money that he stole throughout his life. I, he, I, he was hey, hiding it. Hey. Do you know where the cis star was hidden? No. At his grandma's house in Winnipeg. Under the house, 
you had to crawl all the way to the back corner on the in the dirt in the crawl space and then in between two floorboards you pulled them down and there was this priceless gem that he had just hidden under a house in a crawl space so if, if grandma would have sold the house or anything like that this cis star was under the floorboards under this house and nobody knew it was there but him yeah isn't that crazy i mean yeah. the whole thing the whole story honestly turns out to be pretty crazy the stuff that he did so did you have something that you were going to say yeah i still think his best er his big next uh, score is going to be the Declaration of Independence. No. No. I've actually seen the Declaration of Independence when I went to Washington. And it's absolutely amazing, but it is a very secure building. Yeah. And, yeah. Let's see him try to do that. No. I don't want to see anybody touch that. He'll get shot instantly. Instantly. That's yeah. Yeah. I think there shouldn't be an electric chair for somebody that tried to do something like that. So, Isn't there like three copies of the direct Declaration of Independence? There could be. I'm only aware of the one, and it's now under big thick glass and really secure area. Now it can't even see light because it's getting so old, old and brittle, and they don't want any of the ink to start to fade or the paper to fade any worse than it is. So now it's in an unlit room, and it's very secured. And yeah, it's a pretty crazy the what the amount of measures that are taken to protect that which rightfully so absolutely should be <clears throat> so anyway like i said we were going to try to make this one a little bit short i think we did that and we still did the story a little bit of a justice in the cliff notes version so i hope that you enjoyed our telling of the story um well it's been 247 years since the Dec- declaration of independence was. fantastic hope it's another 247 years before you know, like anything starts to fade on the document. Nope. Yep. All right. So appreciate you guys listening to it. Go check us out. All of our social media. Check us out on Patreon. We appreciate all of our Patreons. And Thank this you has everyone. been your bonus episode. <clears throat> this has been your bonus episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. <clears throat> Jacob did a good job. And I think that we had a pretty decent story. Like I said, when I watched it last night, I was like, that one would be pretty fun. We're getting ready to take a little trip now. So we're going to head out. Um, but and we're next gonna week, have, and I'm gonna have him practice his kicks. Yeah, because I'm the Chuck Norris of America. <laughs> All right, so thank you guys for checking it out. Um, anyway, fun stuff coming. Um, we got a bunch of guests coming up. I, I hope that everybody enjoys it. Um, we'll be back to talk about our trip to Indianapolis. Is where we're heading now to see my big sister. So um, anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you next week.